Hey YouTube! Ta da! Okay, it looks the same as before. I've done lots of videos of this um, base before. This is the one I've talked about. Well, maybe not done that many videos, but I've talked about it a lot. This was the base, the guitar that I always regretted selling. Um, when I was doing my um, video for my birthday the, the other week there, um, I was saying that, uh, telling my guitar history. Well, my first base was a West Tone Spectrum that I hated which I just bought off my pal because I joined a band and didn't have a bass, so I borrowed it for the first week, and then I think I maybe only had it for a couple of months. And then I bought myself this and Victor Morris, um, and then I sold it in 1998, I think. So 20-something years ago, and I always regretted it. At the time, I had no idea what Aria Pro were. I had no idea what um, Made in Japan meant anything or Matsumoku or any of these things. I just knew that this was a fantastic base and I traded it in, got 60 quid for it in Merchant City against uh, an Epiphone EBO base because because I always wanted an EBO base. Um, they didn't exist till that point. Um, so I always regretted selling that and ever since then I've never actually regretted selling a guitar because I kind of keep them. If I'm, if, I'm, if I'm really worried about it, I tend to keep them, um, which doesn't work. So, basically the reason was I was in a band playing sort of Stones and Beatles songs and not really a Stones and Beatles-y looking bass. I play it now. Um, and then a couple of years ago, actually the same day that um, Andertons did a video where they'd looked out, they, they both the two guys had both bought guitars that were the same as the ones that they, they started on. Well, not the exact one. This is the exact one that I had. It's still got the same dents in it. Um, there's things I remember about it and as soon as I saw it on Facebook Marketplace, it's just it was totally bizarre. It was the same day that this um watching uh the Andertons video and you could see them and I was going up your odd that area base which I've talked about in videos long before that, going up here it was the one I always regretted getting. I tried to find other ones. I'd seen another couple since then, but they always had the um Rosewood fingerboard. Mine had a maple fingerboard. Uh, and then it came in, and this is so I got the exact same one back as soon as I saw it. I was like, Up here, oh, that's the, the, the right one, it wasn't that expensive, so I, I'll totally have that. Um, and then the guys, I've got some screw holes in the bottom of it, which I can't explain, which are here. Um, and the reason for that is because I used to have a stand like a bike stand that I stuck onto the bottom of it so I could lean it against the wall. Um, because it was always annoying in the studio when you stopped for the break and stuff like that, where'd you put this shape of guitar? You can't just lean it against the wall. So you, know, you always end up having to sit it flat on the floor and all that. So I, I put like a stand thing in it. It was always a nightmare because you could never find a, a case that fitted it. I did eventually get a case just a couple of weeks ago. Um, yes, so I only ever used the bridge, the neck pickup because the bridge pickup sounded awful. Um, it wasn't until I got it back a couple of years ago and I was up here thinking, oh, two pickup bass. I've never, I've never really, I've always kind of against two pick basses because this one had like a, a good pickup and a, the, the other side was completely useless. What it actually was, was um, the neck pickup didn't work at all. It was the bridge pickup that worked, but when you put the, the, the switch was upside down, so when you put it to the neck pickup, some of the sound leaked through the switch. So it was like about a tenth of the volume as the bridge pickup. And I just assumed it was the bridge pickup that worked. Um, and then when I got it back, I was like, try it again. Now I know that that was why it, it is because the pickup was burst. So now it lives again. Um, I was looking into getting it rewired. Actually, I bought the black, oh, I've moved it. The black uh, Aria base I bought a couple of months ago, um, really cheap. One of the reasons I was so keen on it was because it had this, one of these pickups in it. And I was like thinking, that, that, just do that and I'll stick the pickup in this. And then it turned out the other base was actually really good. I was kind of expecting it to be broken or something. And it, it was too good to take the pickup out. It's a stupid shape. You know, you can't just put any other pickup in. It's got to be, and it, although it looks like it's a sort of, sort of P-Base pickup, actually a reverse P-Base pickup, because it's giving you, the P-Base pickup's normally the other way around, isn't it? Yeah. So as you can see there, it's like a P-Base, on a normal P-Base pickup, the th th bottom three strings would be s sampled at, at, in a bassier place, and then the top three would be dingy. So this is like a reversed P-Base pickup. It's not actually a P-Bass pickup in below it, it's uh, just a humbucker, but it's only got three poles, so the coils are full size, and it had a burst coil. If it had, if it had, had like pole pieces that had been a proper humbucker, I would have just fixed it and wired it as a single coil, um, because only one of the coils was burst. But uh, yeah, so here it is. 
So and when I got it back, I, I realised that it was the bridge pick I was listening to, so I swapped the two pickups around. So when I've been using it in the last couple of years, I've been using the neck pickup. Or I've been using the bridge pickup in the neck position. Both pickups will be the same, I'd imagine. So I looked into getting it rewound, and I, there was a guy in Glasgow somewhere. I offered to rewind it and it was like he wanted 80 quid or something like that that's kind of like almost half what I paid for the base so it was like well I'm not going to do that so I just decided I would just have just use the P bass pickup I don't need two, two pickups anyway and then my pal Wayne uh, he knows a guy from Let's Bases John Let's um, who offered to buy it and it was like yeah for a much much better price um, I, don't, I will be sending my, 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 uh, my t-shirt when I get them through um yeah, he doesn't seem to have a website, but if you look up Let's Bases, you can see he makes these sort of things. Um, very exotic looking. Uh, the only video I could really find was this guy looks a bit like Lewis Hamilton just because of his haircut. Um, and it's like, so he makes bases, but he also winds pickups. I couldn't really find a website for him, so he's in Leicester. Um, but cheers, man. You've really done a good job on this. It's now working. So here's the, the pickup that always works. But it used to be in the bridge position when I was using it in my vans, the comfy chair, burnt skin, and then, then G Rock, our forum, for the first couple of weeks until I decided I needed to have the, the Epiphone EBO, which was a stupid move. So, neck pickup. Now we've got a bridge pickup. And both pickups. on sound which I've never heard before obviously I had a couple of years or however long I was playing it when I was 18 or 19 um, it was always a bridge pickup and then in the last couple of years it's always been the neck pickup but having them both on at the same time is great I'm not sure it is um, but it got me back he did, because he, um, it was a, such an, an odd pickup he wasn't uh, John Lex wasn't sure whether it was out of phase or not and um I, I don't know, I, I think it, I can't decide whether it's out of phase or not. Um, sounds good though, so I'll have that. I don't think it is out of phase. Um, my only way of thinking of that is I've got a box space which has just a single P bass pickup that's actually got a phase switch on it and I'm sure and it also it's P bass pickup is kind of almost in this position it's not what it would normally be um, and I'm sure it's much thinner that's the way it's quite it's got that sort of honkiness but not that much honkiness it kind of mixes well with that Times uh, just in rehearsals and the after the end Sabbath band and it's just absolutely love playing it. It's like kind of I don't think the rest of the band is. It's not particularly Sabbathy. Well, in saying that, Geezer Butler did use an Ironbird bass at uh, Live Aid, so yeah, it's not miles away from that kind of idea. But it's just the great thing about having an Explorer is like resting your hands on it like this. Um, just brilliant. Um, fantastic bass, absolutely love it. 1983, 1980, uh, 1983. Uh, Matt Sabuco built, got big chunky bridge on it, same as that black 1985 laser that I got. Um, these knobs aren't original, but those are the knobs that were on it when I had it 23 years ago. Pickup switch is a Matsumoku pickup switch. You can tell that it's got a sort of square, um, doesn't have a rounded top on the switch. Uh, it shouldn't have the poker chip that says rhythm and treble on it, but again, that was on it when I had it um, 23 years ago, whatever. Uh, so it would be 15 years old when I had it. And the guy who looked after it, again, thanks very much for looking after it so well. If I had kept it, I'm not sure it would have survived as it is. Because I 
when I started messing about with things like well, I've, I've recently put back together that Avon EBO but I mean I chopped it up and this could have been turned into a double neck or a bit sawn off or extra pickups put in it and all these things because just because it was like you know mine I didn't think it was worth any money uh, so in that in that respect I'm quite pleased the other, the other chap had it and apparently he played it down at a gig in was it the Bloodstock Festival or something like that and I think he was in a, a quite a popular heavy metal band I'll put a loop in. I'll be using the twin note fuzz pedal, which um, I did a review of the other day. I'm trying to use the Behringer one actually. And chorus at the same time. See what happens, maybe. <laughs> the other day and the 
Yamaha sort of 80s flanger, which just does mad noises and I can't really use it. Um, it's got the one piece maple neck which is my favourite it's 32 inch scale which I really like as well which is kind of in the middle between short scale and long scale kind of the best of both worlds I've actually got another area base which is the same scale length it's kind of it's a TSB um, not the bank uh, it's a si very similar type of thing um, apart from it's a P base more sort of like a P base um, I'm just, just going to play this all night. Um, I, I, I love this because I, I wonder. Um, I wonder if I should maybe be. Would I be tempted? There is a guitar version. This is a, 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 Z, a ZZB or a ZZB Deluxe. Um, so I wonder. Should I? Should I be on the lookout for the guitar version? You can get even in the same color. I don't know. Um, I'll see what happens in Trade Tuesday if I'm. If I'm if anyone's uh, I'm trying to sell a few guitars just now and I will be once the lockdown's over I'll be trying to sell quite a, a pile of them and it's like if you've got one of these for trades then it's I'm maybe likely to take it. Uh yeah. And these new strings. These strings were on it when I got it back from the 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 guy in I don't know where was he? It was outside I think. Um so yeah, so this 
someone asked me, I was doing, I've been started doing, I'm going to start doing live streams on a Sunday night, I think. I did a, a wee one on Wednesday there as a sort of a, a tester. I didn't announce it then, I just hit record uh, just to see if it worked. And people were asking me what my favourite guitar was. And it's like, there's a few that kind of sit out as being my favourite guitar. I don't have one. Well, I generally tend to go for the 8-string bass because it's kind of got everything. But this, because I absolutely loved it and because I didn't have it for 20 years um, and always regretted selling it and then got it back, it's kind of got a better story than most of the other ones. I mean, all the other guitars I had at this era. But I had this. My guitar collection consisted of that Yamaha acoustic I played at my birthday last week, my Epiphone I probably didn't even have the Epiphone SG when I bought this. Round about the same time, so that would be about 97, 97 somewhere, 96, 97 probably I bought this maybe had it for a year uh, and partly because the, my pal and um, my first band the comfy chair um it was um my pal went to the, the guitarist went to america and when he came back he brought a jackson kelly which is kind of a sort of exploratory shape and i just thought oh pointy guitars they're cool they really like the music that's necessarily you know goes with this type of guitar you know your hair metal and stuff like that but I just thought it was cool. Also, I'd see him standing there resting between songs like that. And I was like, right, I need to buy a bass. I hate this West tone that I had. And this was the one I bought. I think, I, if I remember correctly, I paid £120 for it in Victor Morris. Uh, and about three years later, maybe not as much as that, I thought I'd found it. And I was like, up here, oh, look, he's got it back. And it was, uh, it was the, the, the Rosewood Fingerboard ones. They're not that rare. Um, and I think, I think it was only 80 quid at that, that time. And back now, obviously. If I saw the Rosewood one for 80 quid, but these these can go for hundreds of pounds now because people are now a little bit clued, more clued up about what they were, what they are. You know, it's like if you're talking about something that's just a quality base, um, as, as a base, it's fantastic. And I'm, I'm loving having the two pickups. Uh, single pickup on its own. It's got its, got its uses, but the, the middle position. It's thunderously awesome. Sure, I'd really get away using it in the Sabbath band, um, like at gigs. It's I don't think it really fits in with the image of the band particularly well. Might to, once I get the two the two bands back up and running after all this, I might actually join a band like an original band playing bass as well, because I do really like playing bass. Bass is just so much fun, especially when you're. It's so I don't know. Just because I've played it for so long, it's dead easy. And saying that, I'm enjoying uh, all the bass player jokes that I get to say when I'm in. Cranking house where I play guitar, I give Nick tons of abuse. He's a bass player just because he's the bass player. Like, bass player, you know what I'm saying? Just getting getting everyone back, or just to take, taking the abuse I got for years from being a, a bass player. Talking about the bass player thing, I was like, I've sent, I've sent in uh, memes, you know, about the bass player being talentless and you know all that. I can't remember which exactly which meme it was uh, to my girlfriend. It was like, yeah, so so how come you picked a bass player? And my immediate reply was, are you not a bass player? You play guitar more often, like as just to justify it. It's like, up here, yeah, it's like if I was just a bass player, then yeah, uh, <laughs> interested in you. Quite funny. Rock on, stay safe, and I'll be on on Sunday night for a bit of a, a talk. I've looked out some uh, expensive stuff. Ooh. Which I kind of wanted to do a video for today, but when this pickup arrived this morning, it was like, oh, get this bass back. I've had, I've had that since 2000. So 20 years as well. So maybe. Did I, I, did I have that in 2000? Right. Can't remember. Rock on, stay safe, and I shall see you on Sunday night for a live stream, probably 7 or 8 o'clock. I don't know. I'll put an announcement thing up, deciding when to do it, and you can hurl abuse at me and ask me what kind of conditioner I use. I should really, actually, I should just be so sponsored by a conditioner. I get asked that quite a lot. I mean, it's like not that often, but I do get quite a few comments. Um, the sort of annoying ones are, what kind of conditioner do you use? And the other one is, I can't understand anything you say. Ha ha ha. You're like, yeah. So it's racist, isn't it? Look up. Catch you later.